And how should the person be punished? To which court should the person be taken? What should the judge tell him? Whether the judge grants bail, should the person be released on bail? These are whims and caprices that the constitutional, uh, a constitutional regime does not recognize. Under military regimes, that could happen because military regimes are not subject to the people and they are not, they were not accountable. But in democracies like the one we are yearning to have, leaders must be responsive. Leaders must be responsible. Leaders must abide by the constitution of the country. Leaders must abide by all other laws created in accordance with our constitution. And then there is the due process which the leaders must follow. In, in the constitution, there are three arms of government. The aim of that is that the executive does not arrogate to itself other powers outside that of executive power, just as the legislature will only act within the purview of its own powers. So <coughs> if a judge grants bail, it is not uh, the audacious pronouncement of an executive or one of them that will decide whether the person should actually enjoy bail or not. No, the laws are already there. The, under our constitution and under our laws and under the pronouncements by the, in various cases by the Supreme Court of Nigeria, there is no offense in Nigeria in which the court cannot grant bail, except, except the person seeking for bail is unable to show special conditions why he should not be granted bail. Mm. The chairman is here. Their principal, Gani Fawehim, was the locus classicus. First, in the issue of bail. Forget the 1963 case involving treason about our law. The case involving Ghani was too critical and whether it was necessary to grant bail in that case. It was in that case that the Supreme Court came up with special conditions under which uh, a person who commits offense that are not ordinarily bailable under our laws can be granted bail. Ghani told the court at that time that he was asthmatic. And while at home, he will always see his doctors every day. And the doctors will advise and medicate him on a daily basis. So when they took him to Maidugu, and there were no facilities there, was there a basis to grant them? And the court said yes. So, it so if you look at the case... The, 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 the ability of the... Exactly. To, to establish this the worst, The worst case is even that of Ibrahim Zagzaki. Mm. Because if you look at the trend, the, the, he was not arrested at the scene of crime. He was not alleged to have committed any offence. Of course, his followers might have misbehaved to the soldiers. Couldn't the soldiers have arrested them? Why would they have to kill them, for example, even at the scene? Mm. Well, well, I think Why it, would it, they have to go to a place where <laughs> the principal is not there mm. and then not only arrest him but kill some other people who are there with him? Mm. And then when you took the man into custody and the court in its wisdom saw that the man is entitled to enjoy bail, you still insist mm. that you are keeping him for his own safety. Mm. You see, in, our, in a democratic so system. Does not national uh, security, and security matters, matters, does it not supersede, you know, what you but, know, what but, 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 but the government has not said they are keeping him for national, they said they are keeping him for his safety. That's no, what they said. You know, you know, old habits die hard. Gary Rochelle has been a PDP spokesman. So, 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 so you see, coming, so the, 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 the level of human rights uh, abuses and non compliance with due process and our constitution is still in place. And that is why I made that clarion call to Nigerians that let them not look at these elites, the political ruling elites, from the color of their tribe. Let them not look at them from the color of the locations of their villages. Let them not look at them from the languages they speak. Let them not look at them from the way they dress or how they try to manipulate them. And let them not, man, let them not bother whether the person is holding a rosary or a prayer beads. Let them take a position that anybody that is not interested in the welfare of the masses who are the majority in Nigerians must be discarded wherever he comes from, whoever he must be. Because if somebody is head of state and I'm at the lower rung of the society 
I'm entitled to live a life like him. Mm -hmm. am I, am I, is my life, when God created me, different from that of General Buhari? The fact that he had opportunities does not subjugate my life in any way to his own. Mm -hmm. And none of those governing us should think that because they have the opportunity to govern our country, that they are better than us. Okay. They are not. All right. Okay. Barry Zubai there. We are going to go into another segment. This is about you know talking to our correspondents all over. But just before we do that, um, I, I need to come to you, Isaiah. You know, the French experience. You know, lessons to learn from French. I thought he has become one of you now. <laughs> no, <laughs> <it's> <laughs> we, we're still taking it from there. Right. Had their lessons to learn. I, I'm thinking about you know what brought Macron you know on, mm -hmm. and um, what was what has been said about Macron is that he hit the ground running, running right. and uh, quickly so many things you know were put in place, mm -hmm. taking opposition into his government, the young ones having a say, and uh, even uh, the youth with the energy also being part of. Are there lessons to learn from? Oh yes, experience? absolutely. There are quite a lot of lessons to learn from the election of uh, Emmanuel Macron. Uh, now, aside the fact that uh, he is a very young and energetic person at the age of 39, and uh, as soon as he got elected into power, he's, he hit the ground running, and that is exactly what is expected. So I think Nigeria should learn from that. This present administration came on board, and for six, six good months, was unable to put in ministers, you know. And as I tell you, there are some parastatals that are yet to be filled up with substantive leadership up till this very moment. So I think Nigeria needs to learn from that if we must grow in uh, in our democracy. I said it earlier on that we are still growing, and uh, but again, we need to be learning lessons from developed countries. You know, we need to know what they have done, how they have done what they have done, and how they are doing what they are doing that is making them to succeed. So I think there are quite a lot of lessons that we need to learn, uh, you know, in subsequent uh, elections in the nearest future on the need to set the ball rolling as soon as it comes up. Yeah, I think Elijah like Kaburu used to be an advocate of changing the entire team. At some point, we had a discuss um, like this. Um, Midterm, you know, going forward, what should the APC government do, you know, to, to change the narratives? Okay. <clears throat> uh, many things. You see, APC has control of governments at the center and in many states. Uh, if I were an APC governor, or if I were, yeah, if I were an APC governor, I would first of all take a critical look at where we were two years ago, where we are now, and then where should we be? And then ask myself, this objective question. Have we done better? Have we taken this state, for instance, better than we left it? So, um, if I were the Nigerian president, I would look at my team and change 90% of it. Of the current, yeah, currently, the 10% now. Yeah. Initially, you're talking about the entire team. What? 90%. And impossible change everybody. Because what have they really done? Okay? And then the most important, like uh, as I said, look, the Nigerian president has 557 executive appointments to make. I'm not sure they have done 50 so to date. This has disenfranchised the foot soldiers, people that actually helped the APC to get into where it is for probably the purpose. Look, people go into politics for different reasons. Some people are there because they want to be given executive power. Give them. They have the capacity, give them. Some people are there for contracts, give them. You can't give yourself contracts as a governor. Wouldn't that so, be a patronage now, patronizing, you know, uh, patronage in democracy? So what government is about patronage? Mm. The job has to be done. That's true. Okay? You cannot, as a governor, go and do contracts. You can only engage in agriculture. That is the only extra 
curricular thing. Uh, yeah, the constitution allows, allows you to, to do right. as a public officer. So people, you know, over 75, over, you know, about, you know, I'm not sure the government has done 57 out of the 557 positions. Fill them out. Okay, these positions are taken, you know, uh, you know, these uh, executive positions are still manned by PDP appointees. So people in the political parties will definitely feel shortchanged. Okay, and then, uh, like I said, at sub-national levels, uh, I would go for programs that are people-oriented. And it is not rocket science. It is not difficult to do. We have seen what uh, rice production has done to the lives of ordinary farmers in Kebbi State. Okay. Um, states are building roads. They are building bridges. They are doing, the, they are making significant contributions to education. Okay. Kaduna is establishing a functional primary health center in each of the 255 wards in the city. That is something. Okay, it is building uh, a, a multi-billion naira trauma center along uh, along Kaduna Abuja Road. They are spending three billion naira on Doka Hospital. That is something because there isn't a single regional or sub-regional trauma center anywhere near here. Water, Zaire water supply, uh, you know, uh, water has been, portable water has been uh, a big issue in Zaire and its environs. Only yesterday, the Zaire water works has been commissioned, or the first phase of Zaire water works has been commissioned. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I were, if I were an incumbent government, I would focus on people-oriented programs, whether or not I'm going for the election. Because there is the judgment of the people. There is the judgment of, uh, of posterity. I will tell you, APC or no APC, political party or no political party, many governors in Nigeria will not get a second term. <laughs> All right. Uh, so with Democracy Day Studio, and uh, we'll, we'll come to Shafiu now, because uh, we need to talk to some of our correspondents all over, just a few of them, find out uh, Democracy Day in some states of Nigeria. Right. I think we, we, we need to take a break. Okay. We to we'll take a break now, and then when we come back, that's uh, what we'll look at, some states of the Federation. Star Times Combo Decoder is here for you. An advanced technology from Star Times that combines the dish and antenna both in one decoder. This decoder is packed with all your favorite news and entertainment channels like Fox, Fox Life, IDX, National Geographic Channel, Star Plus, BBC, Al Jazeera, POP, live matches on ST World Football, and over 120 exciting channels. Get the Star Times Combo Decoder for just 13,900 naira and enjoy great entertainment for the entire family. So, go ahead, eat your cake and have it with the Star Times Combo Decoder. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. This is Television Reborn. Enjoy more than 200 channels. No decoder needed. The real digital TV is here. Star Times Digital TVs.
Watch Liberty TV channel Kaduna on the following platforms. Star Times Decoder, Go TV Decoder, All HD Free to Air Decoders, NBC Free TV, Digital Terrestrial Setup Box, Worldwide Streaming on www.LibertyTVRadio.com. Liberty TV, Voice for All, Vision for All, for Vision all. for Vision. All. Imagine being without your phone for two weeks. <laughs> Imagine being without your car for two weeks. Imagine being without electricity for two weeks. Yeah, two weeks is definitely a big deal. Subscribe for two months on any bouquet and get two weeks free of exciting content like the International Champions Cup, the FIFA Confederations Cup, and all FIFA competitions, SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, and so much more. So go ahead and subscribe for two months and get two weeks free. Keep the children and the entire family entertained during the summer holiday, and they will definitely thank you for it. Store Times. Enjoy digital life. TV, voice for all, vision for all. The maritime is fast becoming the foremost economic development sector in Nigeria. Africa's shipping business delivers anything and everything from the maritime world to you. It focuses on matters affecting importation and exportation, as well as creating a forum for shippers in the country. For in-depth talks on the maritime, news, events, latest texts and trends, join me every Tuesday, 7 p.m. for the African Shipping Business. Nigeria Shippers Council, protecting the interests of the Nigerian shippers. Assalamu alaikum, it's Ramadan again. Tune in to your informative and educative program, Ramadan Karim on TV. Promises to be interesting, fun, with lots of gifts. Join your host, Abu Kodri Bussari. Ramadan Karim, Ramadan for other placement sponsorship or product support, call Welcome back. Uh, it's Democracy Day Studio, and uh, we're looking at uh, uh, democracy 18 years on with it, and uh, where we hope to take it to. N now, Lawrence, I I'll come to you. Th this is a collective responsibility to make this democracy work. And uh, of course, we do know what leadership has to do in it. But looking at it all, the responsibility of all Nigerians to make this democracy work. Now, what would you be the high points of where you do you'd be looking at here? You know, I said before that the way our leadership come, come up is the bane of our problem today. It's not any other thing because a bad father at home will always be a bad president. A good father at home will always be a good president. If you have proper educational bringing, you don't have a choice. If you have skewed where you pay yourself through, if you enter, you pay yourself through the elections. So we need to sit down 
tell ourselves that personal truth that you tell yourself when you are sitting alone. You can lie to everybody, but you can't lie to yourself. We need to sit down, dialogue, find out why are we where we are? What do we need to do? Because for me, it's not about us. I think we got it wrong, and there's little time for us to patch up before we leave here. But what are we going to leave for the generation that are coming? For me, that's my worry. Are we going to leave this? You know, you mentioned Emmanuel Macron. Don't forget that Emmanuel Macron was part of a system. He was a former finance minister in France. Mm. So he was part of the establishment. He didn't just jump out. Mm. The, our question should be, how do people get involved? Who before now were not involved? Mm. Is there a system in Nigeria that can allow that? The answer is no. Our elections are too expensive for any, an ordinary man to step in. Not only from the political party side, but even from the electoral body itself. How many people are, are willing and have the money to pay? You know, I made an analysis. And when you are talking about this corruption, 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 90% of the houses built by Nigerians are built with corrupt wealth. If you go through the ranks of the civil service, I said to a businessman, you uh, urban, urban houses? <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it personal houses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Urban, urban, urban houses. houses yeah. Yeah. No, some of them are even in rural areas. <laughs> like my, my people, people from the south, they don't build the, uh, in urban. They can build their one, two bedroom flat. Their mansions are at home. Mm. Yeah, so that, if, you, if you take it, if you go through the public service, you cannot build a hundred million house. Mm. Yeah, Dr. Inusu, so, uh, uh, fundamentally things are wrong. Yes. Now, looking at um, our democracy and the need also to have a viable opposition, uh, you talked about uh, some APC members taking the, the, the responsibility of being opposition to the government, telling the government the truth. But we need that strong political parties, you know, to form that opposition that will put the government on its own. How do you get a strong political party? Th that's you can't. Th th that's where I'm coming from. Sophie, mm. You can't. Let me give you an analogy. Um, the political parties in Nigeria today, they have been systematically annihilated in terms of how their structure is. Individuals come into the political parties from other political parties, issue of this cross capital. We won election in the Kitty, for example. The moment we won the election, our state assembly member, before you knew within a short period of time, ran to PDP. The constitution gave room to it. The electoral act gave room to it. That was why when I was addressing the National Assembly, I told them that they should expunge that area of cross capital because it's weakened the political party. Labour Party just recently they are senators and House of Rights member. Some of the leaders from the highest authority called the chairman of the party, telling him that he should allow those people to cross carpet to his own party. So we weaken the system completely. There is no way in which any of the political party, a political party like mine, who is National Conscience Party, since 1994, we don't charge you even money to, to contest election. It's free. Yet we are not winning election because the, ele the system is so expensive in such a way that none of us are allowed to just survive as a political party. So we cannot be strong. So in other words, even when we are even a one party state. No, no, no. no. It, 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 let's, let's even say that not even one party states. Hmm. Because the moment, like for example, APC is winning now, everybody is going to APC. If, for example, tomorrow is NCP that win, everybody will come. So it's not about ideology. No, no, it's not about it's ideology. About interest. It's not about ideology. It has become more of personal interest. So that is the reason why we must make laws that can stand the test of time. And I told them that today you are there. When you leave, if you don't make laws that can stand the test of time, you find yourself on this particular side of the aisle. So these laws, the Electoral Act must be structured in such a way that it allows the political party to be strengthened on their own. Even the political party who are in leadership as of today, People that cause the shots are not the leaders of the political parties. The chairman or the secretary, or they don't call the shots. It's those who, people who pump money into the particular political party that call the shots. So, many political parties need to be, find one way or the other, independent. There must be a technical funding for political parties so that this political party can be owned by the people. So, therefore, you cannot get leaders leading the political party and then they can tell even the people in government the bitter truth because every elected person, imagine today you can just pick up somebody and then you make him a candidate. When he wins election, he becomes extremely rich. And so he doesn't listen to you anymore. 
But once the party is in the schedule and is in control, then you can tell, then you can have all this viable opposition that in which you are talking about. Mm -hmm. But at the moment now, the political parties have been weakened and it deliberately so. We must change it and there must be a way of a paradigm shift because, believe me, all these leaders, all those other political party leaders, they follow this up their time. The system is such a way that it's giving them room that they can recycle themselves every now and then. We need a paradigm shift. They need to move on and then give the new, new lease and love for a younger set of political leaders who are ready to take this country further than where it is. Quickly, uh, this thing about whether you call it a conspiracy or not, you know, that uh, people have just decided to stay back from the affairs of Nigeria, people that should talk, their voices would lend, you know, to the Nigerian issue, have refused to talk or refused to say, like the uh, late uh, Bolaigi would say, uh, see, don't look. Uh, it, has that, you know, done a little uh, damage to, you know, this democracy that we have? People not wanting to participate rather than just stay and see how uh, drama unfolds. It has. And part of the reason is what the chairman of NCP said. Uh, in a system like our own, it should be the parties, the label, and the NGOs, and other organized groups right. that should put the government to responsibility, always calling them uh, to do what is right, and then criticizing them where they go wrong, and offering constructive uh, solutions to problems they feel have arisen. But our system does not work like that. Nigeria, right from right before independence, was built on a foundation of deception, where uh, all the apparatus of government were only built to safeguard the rights of the privileged class. The poor masses were left on their own up in issue right from the beginning. So it is a system that is still striving in our country. So the elites, I keep insisting about the political elites. Once a party wins an election, because Dr. Inusa is talking about the NCP, the PRP has been in place since the 10th day of August, 1950. It is an offshoot of the NEFU, and it has continued like that. And it is a party, it is the oldest party in Nigeria. It is the party of the poor masses. But even in Kaya, where our national chairman comes, can we win an election there? <laughs> the councillorship for Kaya, can we win? Are we cannot. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. So, but, so the, the, the point is, uh, these political parties, take the present trend. Look at somebody like Obani Koru. He, he, he was charged to court. He even on up to what he has taken from the coffers of government. And now they say it will come to APC. Mm. Look at what is happening in the yes, South. Automatic immunity. Yes, Look, the they are saying yes. what they are saying is that they will <laughs> hand over the whole of Southeast to the APC. <laughs> Look at what is happening all over the country. And the ban is because people go into these political parties just for their selfish vested interests. Mm. They don't have the interests of the masses at heart. They do not they cannot lay claim to any ideological limit. They are just people that exist on their own for material gains and opportunities. That's all. And that is why you see that there is no voice, no single voice in the country. Take what is happening to us uh, uh, during a good president, good luck, Jonathan. This Boko Haram. One Nigerian will have called them to order, assuming that those leaders, like General Hassan Usma, were around. They will just call them to order. Take Mahmoud Gumi. People say he's a religious fanatic, but Mahmoud Gumi has never given a note even to a Christian and it was rejected. It has never happened because of integrity, because of their ideological postulations, and because they are not pretenders. Most of the leaders today are just pretenders. And that is why we are calling on the masses, the masses of the Nigerian people to open and shine their eyes, that they have no other enemies than those in authority. And all they need to do when there's an election, because now we, we, we are not capable of pushing them by way of recall mm. from the House of Assembly, because from the National Assembly. Mm. We, cannot, we cannot appeal to, to our members to impeach any of our governors. So the only thing left to us now is to wait for 2019 and then repeat what was about to happen in March. <laughs> because if you followed the trend that time last week, it was even concluded that the PDP 
had won the Marshi Dusi election. That's good. That was what happened. So, and the masses can do it. We can do it, we can repeat it, we can push anybody out of power whom we feel is not responsive, whom we, we feel is not transparent, whom we feel cannot take care of the coffers in the interest of all Nigerians. Oh, uh, I think <laughs> we're we really winding down. Yeah. Um, a little bit. Uh, you've heard what uh, Barrister has said, and also the fundamental challenge. I have heard the Prime Minister's manifesto. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Your last make, line. Make, making is. governance, you know, <clears throat> people-oriented, and the people should take charge of our democracy. What's your take on that? Well, um, I would like to associate myself with, well, the barista's views are very extreme, but it is PRP. I, I, Probably I, I, because they're coming from a PRP perspective. You see, what Barista and uh, Lawrence, yes, sir. what Barista and Lawrence are saying is this. We need to perfect our leadership selection process. Okay. Uh, he has probably read a lot about China and Deng Xiaoping and yeah. the Chinese leadership selection process. Well, you know, China has been a civilization for over 200 years. Okay, but that is not an excuse for us not to start oh, somewhere. Start the journey. So, how do you, in a country like Nigeria, how do you perfect or how do you begin be, begin to perfect the leadership selection process? It has to be by through, uh, through political parties that are rooted in the people of the country. What do we have now? Uh, uh, we have anything but. But we can begin to revolutionize our leadership selecting process by, in the first place, having political parties that are people-oriented. It is unfortunate, um, uh, you know, what is happening in the APC now, the influx of these PDP elements. Look, no, no, no matter what you do, take Kano, for instance. APC scored 1,903,999 votes. In Kano. What did PDP score in Kano? So how would the infusion of PDP elements in Kano help APC tendency? Kazuna, APC scored 92% of the votes in the presidential election. Almost overwhelming. Exactly. So how would that 8%, even if there was no that even if nobody voted for National Conscience Party? And the and the PRP, assuming all Everybody that eight percent voted for the for the PDP, what contribution, what significance will those PDP elements have in Kazuna politics? Why don't you build up on what you have? Uh, much to the credit of some states, you find that there are one, two, three, four states in this country. Uh, that have refused to allow this, call it pollution, call it systemic pollution. Okay, one, two, government has to live to its own part. Okay, you have you have no business bringing in someone that opposed you, that marginalized your supporters. You bring him in and make him minister. It is wrong. Even if he has the capacity? It, it is wrong. Are there, is there no capacity in, in your own political party? Look, Nigeria has moved from Nigeria of 1979, where it was very difficult, especially in many northern states, to get lawyers with 10 years post call experience to be appointed attorney generals. Nigeria has moved. Go to any ward now, you will find a lawyer who's telling a post call. Am I right? You are right, sir. Okay, but in Kaduna it was difficult. It was impossible to find a lawyer who's telling us post call experience in 1979 to be made attorney general. Ditto Kano, Ditto Borno. So the capacity is there. 
And then, uh, no, this, these problems are multifaceted, are multidimensional. But then you have to start somewhere. Okay, so I beg to differ in this issue as regard to the defense and the help of the PDP in, the, uh, in bringing in this, this, this government. Very clearly, we all knew the position in which the um, um, Baraje influence in this, in this election. They specifically tear the PDP flag. No, you were not here. I want no, to do that. No, you were not here. I want uh -huh. to do that. Okay, fine. Then. Because hours. that is what I want to know. Because the, thing, the only thing that the um, APC has as a problem is that they are not being able to actually whip everybody in line. No, we have made this point before you mm -hmm. came. Yes, okay. Permit me because uh, that's why probably I'm making the intervention. Yes, right. As regards to saying that probably the APC, the PDP, if they whip everybody in line, probably they will have gotten it right. But they've not shared the power accordingly. Mm -hmm. Like I keep on saying that the five of them went into the market. Only two are benefiting from that particular market profit. Mm. That is the, AP, the APC, APC, ACN, APC, CPC. Mm. All other ones are just thrown to the dust. There's a challenge of managing. That success. is just the problem. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, I just hear your last slide. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's, it's really quite interesting. Mm. But again, uh, the, the point is that we are getting somewhere. Mm. Uh, we have been able to establish the fact that uh, there are things that needed to be corrected. There are progresses that have been made so far so good. But uh, again, uh, as a country, we need to be more proactive in some of the things, particularly as it affects the welfare of citizenry. So Nigerians uh, are calling to the government in power at the moment that the people are hungry, and because they are hungry, they are certainly going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. And so they need to step up, you understand, and make life much more better for the citizens. And that will just be about the size of it uh, on our program, Democracy Day Studio, and where we're looking at uh, this democratic uh, uh, dispensation and how far we've come with it. I would like to thank you, thank you Lawrence Obewe, sharing thoughts with us. This thank you very much. And Dr. Yunus Tanko, National Chairman of the National Conscience Party, thank you for being part Thank you very much. And uh, as uh, Benjamin, Leadership State Correspondent, my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. And of course, uh, Barista Elzwai, it's, Abuka, it's thank you. It's a great pleasure, sir. Thank you very All right. much. All right, and uh, Big Brother, Alayi Kabuya, yeah. mm. always. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my colleague, uh, Chef Sleeman, thank you too for being part of it. We're going to I'm move into you. another segment of it. This will be the house segment where some of the things that we did not take in, in this segment, like our uh, correspondents, you know, reporting to tell us what happened in some states, will come up in this second or uh, third segment, so to say. Thank you and have a happy Democracy Day.